Hi everyone, it's Diane back with another card for you on this Friday so you can have some paper crafting fun and maybe this weekend you'll have some time to do a little bit of card making. So I hope you're all doing well. Um, let's see. The next workshop, that the, the next in-person workshop that I'm having will be October the 18th at 10 a.m. So if you're local and you're interested in joining us in those cards, just give me a little heads up here so I can have all your products ready for you. Uh, we were originally gonna do Christmas cards, but I talked to a couple of my regulars and I think we're gonna do like Thanksgiving cards this month and then we'll do Christmas cards next month because we wait until next month to do Thanksgiving stuff and fall, we're already be getting into Christmas. So we switch things around a little. So for today, now we've talked several times about how you can use the design that we're making, but if you don't have the same stamp set, you can use a different stamp set. Well, I found this card on Pinterest, um, <clears throat> and I've seen them before, but I don't think I've ever made it. And it's it's a, a round card. And I think at one time, I think I had pre-cut cards already made. They came in a kit and they were already circle cards, but I don't think that I ever made one. So I wanted to make this card. And then, you know, there's room inside to put your little message. And then this just stands up against your, your, your prop. It's kind of hard to do. To show you on the camera but it stands up it does really trust me there see <laughs> and um well then i was thinking let's do both so this is an old stamp set this is an old old one that i have and it was called colorful seasons so i'm sure you probably don't have this set or if you do and you want to make the same card it it's a very pretty card. I just made the little lawn chair and I made some bare branches, um, stamped off once and did second generation stamping of some fall leaves around it. And oh, and then I uh, used my blending brush with a little bit of gray granite and went around the outside. No, I'm lying. Just a smoky slate. Gray granite's out for something different. Um, this was on smoky slate paper, and I used some smoky slate around the edges. A little bit of um, <clears throat> early espresso on the bottom so that it looked more like ground instead of sky. But I wanted it to look like an autumn afternoon. And just, you know, hello, I'm thinking of you. So we're going to do another one now, but we're going to use a current stamp set. One that is readily available to you, I do believe, anyway. I guess I should have checked that. I don't know if they're on back order or not. This was from Simon Says Stamp. And this is Santa's Helpers. And we have this um, set. I don't even know how many stamps are in this. A lot. I don't think it tells me. And I hate to tell you, I'm not going to count them. It comes with coordinating guides. And I don't need any of those today, but I do have those. Um, oh yeah, I did another one too, just for fun. I did a Halloween card with the Wonderfully Wicked set. And I did this only because I wanted to play with the green glaze, um, embossing glaze. So I did the same thing and just put some green gemstones on this one so that it looked a little bit more spooky. My inside is, that glaze is a little hard to see on the camera. I'm sorry. And I splattered it with some green perfect pearls. And that's what I used my gray granite around. I, I used my blending brush and darkened up the edges a little bit because I had that on black and I didn't want such a stark difference between the black and the white there. So I did get one little Halloween card done. If we have time, when we're done with Santa's helpers, I have one other one that I would like to make because I need a couple birthday cards. Set these aside. Put the 
back with the dye so I don't get them too mixed up. And the only thing that I did off screen so far was I stamped my little image and I did stamp that in gray granite because I didn't want to do it in a harsh black on white paper. And I did use alcohol markers to color in my little elf and my snowman hat and that's why I did that off camera because I wasn't going to put you through the torture of watching me color this little fellow. He's pretty small and um, I colored him pretty much with the tips of each alcohol marker. And if I have time to do the other one, I'm just going to use regular markers because I think they have a finer point. So we're going to start with a card base. Now to make sure that you can make this circle card any size that you want it to, um, I'm using my layering circles. And we can make a circle card with the largest circle if we want to, but make sure you have an envelope that this is going to fit in. So this is probably this would probably turn into a five by seven card. <clears throat> yeah, I think so. And I'm not making five by seven. So what I would suggest is you just make your card base the way you normally would. So this is just a half of a sheet of eight and a half by eleven card stock that I have and I'm going to score this and fold it in half just like we're doing a regular card. So I'm going to score this at four and a quarter and you could do this either way landscape or portrait doesn't matter and fold my card. Now we know this is going to fit in an envelope so I can choose whatever circle I want to to fit this card as long as it doesn't go larger. If it goes any bigger than that, I know it's not gonna fit in the envelope, right? So if I were to choose that great big one, actually, that would work. That will work. Oh, except I already have other parts cut out for it. So I don't wanna do that. Changing my mind, I think. No, I have everything else cut out. We'll just go ahead and do it this size. So I'm going to make mine this circle, I believe. Yes. So I'm going to take my circle die, lay it on my cardstock with the edge hanging over so that the cutting part of the die is not on the card stock. This is where our card is going to stay together. I have absolutely no room here. I think if I move to my right at all, I'll probably trip and kill myself. I have um, everything out for my card today. Working on my one for Monday and free cards for my class on Tuesday. So I have my, I actually have two done for Tuesday, but I'm not sure about the first one that I did. I like it, but I don't know if I want to do that one for a class. So one for sure. The second one is a maybe. I have my plates lined up here. And I don't want my circle the way on the card. I did that the other day, I wasn't paying attention, and I had the circle too far over, and I cut that card right in half. I have to figure out a couple more cards here. And then this is going to be our card base. Now you'll need one more circle this same size and you can either make it the same color as your base or <clears throat> in my card I did it on white because I was stamping my little elephant snowman. So I, I cut that one out just a basic white thick cardstock. Oh you know what while I'm at it Out of the corner here, 
I'm going to use the small, I think this is my smallest circle in my layering circle dies. Oh, and I'm going to cut two layers before I do that. And on my one, I did it four layers and it worked well, so we might do that. I'm just going to glue my two sheets together before I cut them. Just make it a little easier for ourselves. Okay. And this is going to be our little stop that we use to stand the card up. So there's one that is a double thickness of cardstock. And I'm going to do a second one. You can also use foam dimensionals when you go to put your little circle on there for your stop. I find it just as easy to use the corners of my cardstock, though. And this is a double layer. So, <clears throat> I think that's all with the big shot. So now I can use those two double layers and glue them together. And then I have four thicknesses of cardstock that will hold my little circle up when we stand the card up. I think I'm getting a sore throat. We did sleep with the window open last night because it was rather warm. <clears throat> I might be paying for that. Okay. So I stamped my image and I did use my stamp and blends or my alcohol markers and colored in my little L. I'm going to take my card base and the one side I'm going to fold in half. It's not going to be exactly in half because we don't have a full circle. Remember we didn't cut that full circle off. So cut, yeah, cut. How about let's just fold it. Let's not cut it. Let's fold this in half. And now this is going to be the front of our card. There's our little stop. And we're going to layer our circle on to the front. Before we put our stop on here, if we're going to add a message to the inside, you can stamp directly on your card base. Or I cut out some circles that were one size smaller so that I'll have a border around my inside. But I'll have a white panel that I can stamp my greeting or my message on. So before we do that, I wanted to play with my little my little paint, my eye zinc diamond paints again. And I did use this the other day. I used, um, what did I use? I used the gold. And it only took a very teeny tiny bit. Now, if you don't have anything like this, I'm sure you may have like um, a glitter pen or Wink of Stella or, um, what did we say, Dazzling Diamonds the other day or um, even glitter and a little glue pen. I wanted to add a little bit of this to my snowflakes that I've stamped, which is why I just did them with my, what I use for granite. I wasn't too worried about them being gray because I knew I wanted to put some glitter over top of them. And this, I think glitter stuff is so cool. It just I don't know, it dries like little shimmers on here. And it's also not like glitter that you can rub off and get glitter all over your floor and everything. This is more like glue pen type glitter. Or glitter pen, I should say. <clears throat> I actually meant to look for those because when I used this stuff the other day and I mentioned glitter pens, I was thinking, oh, I think I have some glitter pens. Don't think that I've ever used them, but I forgot to go look. 
So there's still not being news today. So you can see I've used this same card design numerous different ways here. Old stamp sets, new stamp sets. I also think I'm going to add a little to the elf's pom pom. And I might just brush a little bit over the snowman since he's all sparkly white from fresh fallen snow. Oh, I did think maybe I wanted to, I was going to add maybe a little bit of, um, I was going to blend a little bit around the base of the snowman, but I would do that with a pale blue, and I don't know if I wanted to add another color. I really want that. I think I'm going to. Basically, I'm just following along everywhere I put a little bit of, um, I use my, what I do on white, because I don't use Copic markers, I have Stampin' Blends, and there are only two pens for each color. There's a light and a dark. So what I typically do is, for white, I just use my light gray and then I use my colorless blender a little heavy right there he has a sparkly nose I use my colorless blender and sort of blend that gray out a little bit That'll do it. Now I can set that aside to dry. Doesn't take very long. Oh, I forgot to get a fresh wipey out in my brush. I don't want it to turn into a briquette. And we will get our greeting stamped. Yeah, this stuff's kind of cool because it's in this little pouch and the cap snaps back on pretty tight. And this was from that scrap stamp art tour when I went there. And the girl that we did our um, little make and take with, with that stuff, she was explaining to us if it does start to dry out, then you just squeeze that little dried piece out of the tube and snip it off. And everything behind that snipped off part is still... Uh, wet glue. So I'll give it a try. How about, I think I had one, oh, this Merry Christmas, which is really very tiny. I thought it would be cute because I don't want anything extra large for this card. Hope the season brings you great joy. And I think we have dies for this. Merry Christmas. Oh, see, I will have to get my big shot back up here again.
I think this is only the second time I've used this set also. Is that one? No, it's not. Maybe that one didn't have one. I kind of thought it did. Oh, this is fun. Oh, that's Christmas. Okay, we only have Happy, Holiday, Merry, and Christmas die cuts. That's okay. That's okay. I'm still just going to use those little ones. So, do you guys send Thanksgiving cards out to your family and friends? Or, I'll tell you, I don't know. I think the Postal Service has oh, vendetta out against card makers because I saw the postage is supposed to go up again. Again. And I went to the post office the other day. I wanted to get the Snoopy stamps. And we're pretty... We're pretty rural here. We have to, we don't even have mail delivery. We have to go to the post office and pick up our mail. And um, anyway, she didn't have the Snoopy stamps yet. And I was thinking, because I think they're forever stamps. So I told her I'm, I need a couple packs of those because I have a stamp collection, kind of. I mean, they're just stamps that I thought would be fun for when my kids are old. Well, they are older now, but I started it when they were younger. Anyways, I started getting these stamps and putting them into a big folder for them. And I want to add the Snoopy ones. Well, I don't want to wait until the forever postage goes up before our post office gets the Snoopy stamps. That's not fair. I might have to stop over at the bigger post office tomorrow and see if I can get any. So I think we'll just stamp Merry Christmas on. And I did stamp this a little bit towards the top of my circle, so we have room to put our stopper down on the bottom. And I'll just stamp Merry Christmas, and um, we'll cut a little strip, a sentiment strip there. Yeah, Snoopy's my favorite. No, I don't want to. I don't think you should have to cost more. Although I guess it's worth it. I don't know, they're pretty crooked. I don't need my big shot to cut that out. No, it's not gonna work, is it? Not gonna work. I think these little elves are cute. Cutesy, cutesy, cutesy. might be pretty on a piece of Poppy Parade, huh? Well, I'm going to have to get a piece out of there because that, what we just used for the little stopper is not big enough. Oh, come here. 
poppy plate. I don't want to take a great big sheet out, and I know I have little tidbits down here. like the font. Oh, you know what? Hockey starts tonight. This is Thursday for me. Remember, I try to, <clears throat> I do try to do my videos the day before because they take a very long time to upload. Okay. So let's put this little guy together. I think this glitter is probably dry. It is. It doesn't take long. We can put our holiday message on the inside. Center it up so that we have a nice little border. Put our stop down here. Now when we put our front on, we only want to put adhesive on the bottom half of the fold because that's where it's going to stand up. So you're probably safer adding your adhesive to the card base rather than your, your circle front. And maybe getting just a little too much on there. little foam dots here. Except I know our um, we stream our television. I don't have cable. I haven't had cable for several years actually. Cut those ties. These, these stamps are adorable. Anyway, so we stream TV, and it really irks me that I can't get the hockey games. Yeah, so I'll try it, but I'll probably end up just having to listen to it on the radio because they block it out of the other. I think you have to, you can watch it maybe through Hulu, but I'll tell you. I think the penguins block that too. Some games you can watch, but I don't think the penguins you can. And being that I'm like one of their number one fans, I don't think that's very fair. Oh, that reminds me of what do we watch over the week? Misery. We watched Misery over the weekend, and she was Paul's number one fan. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not quite that lunatic, though. Don't worry. in here. Come on. I want to... Oh, we can... oh, that's a half an hour. All right. Well, I try to keep them short. So you know you can do that card in a half an hour. If you want to hang out with me, I'm going to do one more because I do want to use this new Wonders. I've only used it a couple times and I know exactly which one I want to use. This little cutie patootie.
Oh, you know what? I can use my bigger circle on this one now since I know that's going to work, huh? Wait, is it? Did it work? <laughs> Did it? I don't remember. I've already forgotten. Hmm. Uh, I don't know. I think my paper is probably cut. Oh, my just make it. My just. No, oh, try it. What's it going to hurt, right? Oh, I hear my kitty cat being bad. Kitty's on the screen. Mommy's going to holler at him. If somebody would have cut their paper straight when they were cutting all these, he'll be happy. He'll be very proud of me. Oh, actually, this one's just a little wider. When, when we're done with workshops or um, if I have classes or kids or whatever, I always have leftovers. People don't come or I make too many. You know, I like to have a spare in case somebody brings a friend or whatever. And so, anyway, I always have leftover cards. And then I try to put them back into the correct package of coloring, you know, whatever color paper it is. Sometimes I'm tired when I get done and I just put them all in a pile. Well, then I end up with this humongous pile of color cardstock that needs put in its home. So I've been going through that pile of cardstock and trying to use it and that's what some of this paper is from. made it just big enough. Or should I say just wide enough. Yay! And now I gotta cut out another white panel because I don't have a large white panel for my image. Tisk tisk. Oh I can't see my tape on her. Oh, it's empty. How did I do that? Right at the end of the card. Hmm. I'm just going to those corners together again on my purple one. I do believe this is purple posy. Anyways, I was going those corners together to make my little stop again. I need two upcoming birthday cards here. One for my sissy. Yes. Her birthday is next week. Oh no. No, don't even lose a die. Oh my goodness, no. There it is. Remember how long it took me to find that other one that I was missing? Oh, there goes all the cardstock. Alright, that part's done. Then we need one larger piece of basic white for that circle. Thick basic white. Oh, I'll take a of paper before I really do trip and hurt myself. hit you in the head. I'm so sorry. I got all 
excited. <clears throat> Go from this side so I don't hit you again. And then I have one the next size smaller down that I can use on the inside so I don't have to worry about that. And she's kind of a large image, so that's probably a good idea to use the bigger circle for her. She is a pretty big. I'll put her down here like that. And hopefully my happy birthday is going to fit up here. I think it will because it's very small. Yes, I think that'll be good. And again, I'm going to stamp just in gray granite. I don't want to have a dark, dark outline. And I think gray granite makes a great, a great image when that's your case. Can you tell I don't know if I'm happy with that? I think she'll be okay. It's a little darker than what I wanted. I was hoping it would be a little bit lighter. That's okay. I can work with it. So I pulled out a bunch of markers here that I thought I would be able to get away with. I did pull out, um, I think this is the one that I use. This is a Spectrum Noir marker that I use for um, the face. Yep, it's a very light ivory color and just always worked well for me. That is the only thing I'm planning on using my alcohol ink on. I just think my markers, I, I stand less chance of them bleeding. Because, you know, the alcohol ink will will spread a little bit if you're not careful. You can be careful and it will still spread. I don't know why my hands are being shaky. Good Lord. Using the fine tip part of it.
Well, am I liking this or not? No, I'm not. I don't like how my, my markers are working with that. I might have to go with alcohol ink. Aww. Darn it. So are you going to stamp on the back? It might work. I wonder if I can get her face lined up in the same place. Because my alcohol ink went through just a little bit there. Oh, see, an alcohol ink takes me forever. I'm just so slow at it. I don't know why, but I am. My hands must be getting dry. My baby wipe continues to stick to my finger when I lay it on the table. So, all right. What else do I have out there? Pink. That's these two. Oh, that's gray. I don't want gray for her hair. I want brown. What is crumb cake? All right, let's give this a go. I do have to pay attention to my colors. The one I was doing the other day, and I thought I had um, Call Me Clover. And it was Mint Macaron. some white Highland Heather. Gosh, I hope I'm on camera here. No, I'm not, am I? Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, no. You missed me coloring in that purple. I know I got really quiet. I'm sorry. I'll get that again in a second, anyway.
do her little wings back there with, I don't know what. Let's do these little hearts because hers can be done in a heartbeat. <laughs> I can do her hair. Crumb cake and crumb cake, thank goodness. A little bit of dark crumb cake in here. Around there. And then a little bit. I don't know what color should I make those. I don't I think those are her wings back there. Her little fairy wings. Oh, actually, I think I colored one of her little fairy wings in pink, so it looks like they're going to be pink. I thought that was part of her. Oh, that one is. I have an idea. I have an idea. I know. I can do it. How about what is this one? Melon Mambo. Maybe we'll just do her skirt, her little petal skirt, and Melon Mambo. That sort of differentiates it a little bit from her wings. beans. Do you like it when we can fix stuff? Yes. Okay. One of these felt like it wasn't on there all the way. Okay. We need some leaves. And then I'm probably going to use ivory on that paper, on like the scrolly part. And you know we're gonna have to add. Oh, I wonder if my glitter paint stayed wet. The other day when I was using that, and I knew I was going to use it again, I put my baby wipe over top of it, and it kept it just damp enough that I was able to use it when I made my other card. I hadn't planned on using it again though. A little pig coloring. Huh. 
Where did that ivory one go that we used for her face? Right here. So I think this is going to work. I think I can use my light pale papaya to add some shadow to that so that her hands don't blend in too much. I had a bunch of these spec. Well, I have a few of the Spectrum Noir markers. That was my first, um, my first try with alcohol ink. And <clears throat> when I bought them, half of them were dry. Did I already tell you? So, anyways, I wrote to the company and told them, you know, because they're expensive. And I said, I got all these markers and they're all dried up. Do you know I had to um, list the number of all of the ones that were dried for them to replace those. So I did, I went through, I had two boxes, went through and got all the ones that were dried out and listed all the numbers, put them on like a little Excel spreadsheet thingy and sent it and that's exactly what they sent me in return, were those markers. Maybe, let's put this down here. Am I still on camera? Kind of, sort of. Aww, she's cute. All right, let's see if our sparkles are still usable. Oh, it is. I was afraid they'd be all dried up. So anyways, I, I kept my ones and added those ones that they sent me to replace the dried up ones. Well, I mean, I threw the dried up ones away and then I kept the other ones, added the new ones from the company. And now over time, many of those have dried up as well. I don't know if they're new markers that they sell last better than the original ones, but I really thought that I would never try alcohol markers again. But then I, I started with Stampin' Up! And um, that was one of the first things I started working towards was getting the alcohol markers. And I like them. So... I don't know if I want to make the investment into Copics. I mean, I have what I have now, even though I'm not a demonstrator anymore, I can still use my Stampin' Up! products and I'm happy with them. So I don't know that there's a reason I should invest in a, a new brand. Time will tell.
Oh, I don't remember to fold my fold my circle up there. The one wonderful thing about making circle cards is you don't really have to worry about stamping your words on there too straight because it's round. <laughs> you can just twist it and turn it a little bit and put it on your card straight. So, let me move oop, you and you aside. I'm sure I have ink on my fingers. She hears another dog outside barking. So, and then we'll get this folded up. I wish there was a way for me to figure out where to fold that and give it a score. I think it would be nice, you know, it would be much neater, but this works. Yes. four layers together here. Good. Now let's add our front. I forgot you're gonna see the back I'm gonna to have to cut another half circle and put back there because you can see my messy my messy coloring back there I forgot about that ah, lesson learned so anywho just to prove my point that you can use a design with old stamps and new stamps and still make the card you don't have to have exactly what is being shown by your maker you know just go make one this is a new set check it out see if you can't get something crafted this weekend send out a card to somebody make them smile and thanks for spending some time with me i'll see you guys again on monday bye